Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend Elungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, we're going to be reacting to feminism, sex, culture, women in Islam, angry rant. A big shout out to the person that suggested this and a big shout out to our subscribers and viewers. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and hello to everybody watching this video. Today I want to talk about women in Islam, particularly I'd like to talk about the hijab, the fact that women cover themselves. And there's a, a specific message that I'd like to send out to all the non-Muslims, and then there's a, another specific message that I want to send to all the Muslims about this topic. Now, I'm really sick and tired of all these non-Muslims who want to sit there and act like Islam is so barbaric and backwards and primitive because women cover themselves. Because there are certain rules in Islam to protect the household, to protect marriage, to protect chastity. People want to act like, oh, you know, men, they should be able to control themselves. They should be able to go out in the society and see women not wearing any clothes and just be able to, to deal with that and still love their wife and still take care of their kids and not be attracted, not cheat on their spouse, not do this, not do that. They should be able to control themselves. Who says that? I think mostly women say that because women, they don't understand what it's like to be a man. When a man sees a woman who is not covered, who has makeup on, who might not be wearing many clothes, He's going to naturally be attracted to her. That's how God made him. Just like you, when you're walking through the food court and you smell a Cinnabon, you get hungry and you're like, mm, that smells good, I wanna get something to eat. Are you crazy for that? Are you some sort of backwards barbarian for that? No, you can, you can understand that that's sort of a natural reaction, right? Now, I'm not saying that just because a man might have that initial desire that it's okay for him to, to act upon it, it's okay for him to, to cheat or to sexually harass people, or to rape, or anything like that. Of course, these things I'm 100% against. What I'm talking about is that initial, that natural response that men have when they see an attractive woman. They can't control that. The best that they can do is they can try to be in an environment that will protect them from these desires. And that might make women upset, but this is, this is reality. This is the real world. And if you think that your society where women don't cover, where men and women, they date and they casually have these little relationships here and there. If you think that that's the new intellectual modern man's way of living, how's that working out for you? How many people get married anymore? How many men cheat on their wives? How many men have babies and they don't even get married in the first place? They don't even take care of their kids. They just have sex, impregnate a woman, and that's it. They're gone. How many women are sexually frustrated at home because their husbands aren't attracted to them? Why do you think your husband isn't attracted to you? Do you think it might have something to do with the fact that he's been bombarded with images of supermodels and porn stars and beautiful actresses since he's hit puberty? But it's the Muslims who are backwards because they try to protect the sanctity of marriage. To all the men out there, this is a big elephant in the room, right? How many of you are addicted to pornography? You won't tell the women about that who want to sit there and make all these accusations about men. But how, you, you can just think to yourself, how many of you guys look at pornography every day or multiple times a week? How many of you have tried to give it up, but you can't? You're addicted to it. But it's the Muslims who are backwards because they try to protect people from all of these issues. No, these rules in Islam are to protect the society. They're to protect the household. Look at the difference, just look at the demographics in the United States, for example. Study the statistics about people that come from single parent homes and people who come from two parent homes. Look at the difference. Look at the effects that these things have on a society. Now, as Muslims, we believe that God told us this is the proper way for you to live in a society. The women should cover. If you wanna have intimate relations with the opposite sex, then you need to get married. God created us, God knows everything. He said that this is the right way. Now, I don't expect the non-Muslims to believe that because you don't or you'd be a Muslim. Whether you believe in, in Allah or Islam or the Quran or not, you should at least be able to understand the wisdom behind what I'm saying in regards to the wisdom behind women covering themselves and how that helps protect a society. It, it helps protect the sanctity of marriage. There are women who they'll get mad because they think, oh, it's unjust. Women shouldn't have to cover themselves, but then they'll get mad when their husband isn't attracted to them. If your husband wasn't out here looking at all these other women, 
he would be attracted to you. If he wasn't out here looking at pornography, taking care of his intimate needs by himself, he would be attracted to you. Even if you might not be the, the ideal supermodel, you're still a woman, okay? And he still has manly desires. He would be attracted to you, okay? He would fulfill those desires with you. But see, people, they want to they wanna reject the guidance of the one that created them, and they think they're so smart. And the people who follow the guidance of the creator, they're the backwards ones. It's ridiculous. That's my message to the non-Muslims. Now to the Muslims. I'm just as sick of Muslims trying to apologize for their religion and try to change it and try to cater to the non-Muslims. Allah guided you to the truth. You know Allah commanded women to cover themselves. You know that there are certain rules and regulations between men and women. This doesn't make Muslims backwards. Don't let them make you think that it's backwards just because they're out here and they're criticizing you. They're proud of their backwards ideology, but you're not proud of the truth. And in conclusion, there's one story that I want to share that will really clarify what I'm talking about. Because when all the Muslims don't follow their religion properly, and you have people sitting there trying to act like, oh no, this isn't from Islam, and this is what extremists follow, you throw practicing Muslims under the bus. You make them look ridiculous in front of the non-Muslims because you've implanted it in, in their mind that following the actual teachings of Islam is like some sort of backwards extreme thing. So the story I want to share, it has to do with some Saudi students that were studying in America. Now, I never publicly talked about this because I think Saudi Arabia and Saudis in general, man, they get a bad rap and it's really unjust because I've been living here for six years. I love this country. I love the people here. It's not perfect, but some of the best people in this world live in Saudi Arabia. They're from Saudi Arabia. There are certain things about this society that are better than any other society in the world. So I don't want to make them look bad and I want to preface by saying that. But of course, there are Saudis who have shortcomings just like all people. And back when I lived in Chicago, before I came to Medina to study, I wanted to get certified to teach English because if I didn't get accepted to the university, I at least wanted to come here and live in a, a Muslim society and learn Arabic. And I said, okay, I'll just, I'll just teach English if that's what I have to do. So there was a school where foreign exchange students would go to learn English. And part of my certification was to go there and to observe some of these classes for, for a couple of days. And when I got there, to my surprise, about 60% of the students there were from Saudi Arabia. I was going to that school to get certified to teach English and then go to Saudi. So the fact that there were Saudis there, to me, that was great. So when I went there, I went to meet with the principal and she went to shake my hand. And as politely as I could, I tried to explain to her that I'm a Muslim, I practice Islam, and out of respect for the opposite gender, we don't shake hands. And you know what she said to me? She said, you know what? 60% of the students here are from Saudi Arabia. Some of them are from Mecca. And they come up to me and they hug me and they kiss me on the forehead. And you won't even shake my hand? You might want to rethink that. So now because these students from Saudi, from Mecca even, because they came to America and they're hugging this lady and kissing her on the forehead, now I look like I'm crazy. And I had a friend who was from Saudi Arabia at the time. I had one friend from Saudi. And I told him what happened. And he was like, Wallahi, they would never do this in Saudi Arabia. The point of the story is, is that if they hadn't done that, if 60% of these students were, they explained to her, they were polite to her. Of course, this is something we all struggle with who try to implement this. But inshallah, if you conduct yourself properly and you explain to them, then inshallah, they'll know, they'll understand. Oh, this isn't out of disrespect. This is just part of their custom. This is just out of modesty, chastity. This is part of their religion. And inshallah, there are people who will respect that. But because they didn't do that, now people who want to implement that part of their deen look crazy, look like extremists. Not only, of course, do you have to worry about standing in front of Allah and the sins you're accumulating, but you're also throwing your brothers and sisters under the bus, the people who want to practice their deen properly. And the last example I want to use is, for example, eating pork. Muslims are so proud to not eat pork. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows Muslims don't eat pigs. Why does everyone know that? Because Muslims, they don't shy away from that. They're not scared. Oh, they're not sitting there thinking, okay, I know that my religion teaches me not to eat pork, but I don't want to offend anyone. So, uh, okay, yeah, Muslims, yeah, we, we, you know, only the extremists don't eat pork. No, Muslims aren't scared to say, no, nah, we don't eat pork. So everyone knows that. But all these other aspects of the religion, people don't know about because Muslims are scared to implement it. If all of us implement it, people will know it won't be so difficult. Wallahi, there are people, there are several times where a woman has gone to shake my hand and I politely declined and they liked it. 
They, they preferred that to shaking hands. Some don't like it. Okay. Who are you trying to please? You trying to please them or are you trying to please Allah? If we all implement these things, people will know about it. People will understand it. Oh, I know he's a Muslim. He doesn't shake hands with women because it's not meant as disrespect. In fact, it's actually meant to be respectful. Women can understand, oh, just like I wouldn't want this individual to touch me on certain parts of my body. In fact, I would take them to court and have them arrested if they touched me on certain parts of my body. They feel that way even about the hands because they really, there are people that really strive to maintain the relationship between husband and wife to avoid all of the issues, all the trials and tribulations that we see spread in Western culture with all of the, the broken homes, the STDs, rape, cheating, so on and so forth. So people will know about it. So that's all I have to say. To all the non-Muslims, I hope you understand that this isn't a, a backwards, crazy, barbaric religion. It's actually extremely intelligent. It's incredibly wise. And if you got to understand where Muslims are coming from, then you'd understand that. And to the Muslims, start implementing your religion. Don't be afraid of it. Don't throw Muslims who practice their religion under the bus as if they're backwards. And the people, they'll start to understand the wisdom behind it. They'll start to see the wisdom because they'll see it being practiced. They'll see, oh, my coworker here, he cheated on his wife with his other coworker. But the Muslim over there, he's happy. He has three kids. He's been married to his wife for 30 years. He doesn't sexually harass me. He doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. I feel safe around him. But you want to act like the Muslims are backwards. Yeah, Muslims, we got our own problems. We got our own issues, mainly when it comes to not implementing Islam properly. But Islam itself is perfect. And before you go criticizing it, you need to learn the wisdoms behind it, because I guarantee there's wisdom behind everything in Islam. Thank you for watching. Very interesting rant. Um, I mean, I don't think Islam is backwards. Of course, there are people that think that, but that's them. As long as you're comfortable with your religion, I don't think someone else's thoughts should affect you. Stand by what you believe in and just enjoy it. Don't let someone blindside, blindside you. There's this thing when you're having a discussion or argument with someone and they say, that's, that's the nature of men. Now that's where people lose me. Even if you've got good points, you're going to lose me once you say that. It doesn't matter if it's the nature of men to look at other women or to be excited by seeing someone dressed inappropriately. You've got self-control. Just like you say, we've got the self-control to choose the right or bad. God has given us that choice to choose the right or bad. You've got the choice not to be affected that by that woman that passed right in front of you. You've got the right to respect your women, girlfriends, sisters, mothers, everything. Wives, everything. There is no excuse in the world that can justify what has become... It's it's like a thing. It's the, I, I don't even know what to say. Society wants us to believe like, okay, yes, men are like this, men are like that. No. You can control yourself. How, why don't you ever get, but women are like that? It doesn't make sense. You can control yourself. And I'm glad he's, he added the, but you can control yourself part. Because then it's like whatever he's trying to talk about loses um, its meaning. Otherwise, I agree with what he was saying. Yes, they're covering themselves so that this doesn't happen, that doesn't happen. They're not sexualized. They're not what, what. Still, there's that. But then if it's the nature of man to be attracted to anything or any woman, then you should know that even that covered person is going to, that man is still going to be thinking that of how that woman looks under that gown. That's just my thought. Because there's this example that I always give. What about rape? Many people are saying rape is because some people say that rape is because of the way women dress. Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe that can be one of the reasons but not the only reason what about that baby that was born two months ago that was raped by maybe the uncle or the father or the brother what about that are you telling me a baby was dressed inappropriately so like i said i'm agreeing with everything we have to dress in ways that we respect ourselves and for the men out there that have said yes we're men we're men no you can control yourself Imagine you're with your woman and then you're seated 
because someone passes you've got the right you feel like you have the right to disrespect them we shouldn't condone such things if you want your women to dress in a respectful manner where she respects her body and doesn't need to wear short things to attract unnecessary attention then you should also be ready to make her or reward her by not embarrassing her in public by looking at other women and that's that otherwise no one should ever think they're backwards if their religion talks about this and this is what they have to do let them do that if yours says something else then it's something else for you otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video